Good day to everyone and those a part of the ILPF Policy Hackathon of 2022. We are team two represented by Michelle, Bea, Stella and Luke. I am Bea and I will be talking about the problem statement. So as we all know, the use of the metaverse has become more popular. And with the rise of the metaverse, it's created an increase in conversations of manipulation of consumers, monitoring and tracking, and the monetization of users. These are our key aspects that we will continuously be mentioning throughout our presentation today. Alongside the metaverse is, of course, the use of AI, such as the monitoring of personal features, such as facial expression, heart and respiratory rates. While this may be beneficial in instances such as added security and data ownership for metaverse users, it also has its downsides. Without the knowledge of the user, algorithms that monitor these features can generate emotional profiles and optimize marketing strategies, just to mention a few. If these are left unregulated, the use of AI-driven avatars, which can be used for monitoring and advertising, can be skillfully aimed at specific demographics, potentially amplifying existing biases and preconceptions in populations, as well as the spreading of misinformation. The targeted advertising has become more complex, with the content injection into the user's world, which can be seemingly organic, such as the virtual people, projects, and activities. An example of this is, according to the book entitled it's Extended Reality, AI agents are able to adjust to a conversational tactics in real lifetime for optimal persuasion through profile data collected about the targeted users. So even the hair color, clothing style, voice, and mannerism are some features that can be customized and used to influence targeted users. This poses as a serious problem, as mentioned by the International Study of Gen Z, conducted by the Center of Generalization Kinetics. Gen Z are less likely to be able to distinguish between the virtual and physical world, as they are more vulnerable to more manipulation tactics in the metaverse. My teammate will now continue on with the next part. This proposal seeks to address issues of infringement of privacy and safety issues, particularly monitoring and tracking, manipulation and monetization of users. We aim to prioritize safeguarding against target manipulation of the specific consumer demographic of Gen Z users, as Adobe research indicates they are most easily influenced. We also propose incentivizing against aggressive business tactics through the protection of individual data autonomy and accountability. For example, although both Web3 and Web3.0 have different focuses, the method of wanting users to regain control over their data is similar, therefore we believe that moving in that, in that direction is suitable. For Gen, for Gen Z users, their digital identity is a strong component of their overall identity. They aim to experience and exhibit authenticity in the metaverse. And this also points to the fact that Gen Z consumers have higher trust in digital interactions than any other users online. Reports suggest that Gen Z awareness of the metaverse is low, but engagement is high. Primarily, this is because the lines between their virtual and physical worlds are increasingly blurred and it is more understood as a spectrum of activity rather than distinct and separate worlds. So for the Gen Z users, social experience is a key draw to the metaverse. And for them, identity in the metaverse is a new opportunity for experimentation. Ultimately, they do view virtual assets as a uh, as a reason to enter the metaverse and technology is also quite important in their concept and understanding of the metaverse because they believe that they can uh, create and influence the future of the metaverse they also intend to have the metaverse reflect their values therefore it is especially important that specific guidelines are introduced to reduce exposure of identifiable Gen Z users to AI customized advertising in the metaverse. By this, we mean that as long as Gen Z users have uh, reported their age in the beginning, uh, then there will be guidelines to reduce this 
manipulation of the consumers and it would significantly reduce the likelihood of impressionable consumers making poorly informed decisions or potential issues with deep fake technology threats. We do acknowledge that there is a limitation that not all users may be truthful about their age upon registration of accounts, but we believe that such a guideline would have a significantly positive effect overall. Disclosure in the metaverse is a major issue for concern. Users often mistake virtual people or virtual products with an organic part of the virtual world rather than a targeted piece of promotional material that was deliberately inserted into the world for that specific user to experience. Policies should mandate service providers to inform users not only of the extent of AI customized monitoring, but also the subsequent injection of virtual people and products crafted from the user's personal profile as subtle forms of targeted advertising. The policy would further mandate these companies to ensure that their AI avatars are clearly identifiable. Platforms should be required to distinguish through overt visual and audio cues that a user is interacting with an artificial agent and further indicate if the agent can perform emotional analysis on them. We propose that the execution of this solution be through a bill enforcing certain disclosures, as well as use of industry standards and guidelines for self-monitoring for regulatory violations. Our next part of the proposal addresses monetization of users through a policy solution which recommends a business model shift from ad-based to subscription-based model. The reason why is because trust is the foundation for consumer-centric approaches and key influencing factor on consumer decisions. A shift in the business model to achieve trust would reduce the motivation to monetize users through such aggressive business tactics. In the event companies are unwilling to shift, under our policy solution, certain sectors are mandatorily exempted from targeted advertising, for example, elections and unregulated medical services. This is because of the adverse effects that can occur due to these ads, such as tribal wars in certain African communities. Service providers would be motivated to accept our policy because industry regulations that appear bad for business effectively undermine trust. Regardless of whether service providers seek to build trust or prevent trust from being eroded, our policy solution should be viewed positively. Thank you.